In this video, I'll show you three techniques that make footage from your GoPro and other action cameras look a lot more cinematic. That's at first a quick color grading technique and an effect that you can use with the free version of DaVinci Resolve. And I also have another effect for you that actually make your action camera look like a big camera, but for that you need the studio version. So I would say let's start with the color grading. So as you can see, I've inserted my GoPro clip here in the timeline, which is shot in the flat picture profile. And I want to make that look like shot on a big camera. So I go into my color page and the first thing that I want to do is to turn color management on because that makes color grading a lot easier. Like all the color grading tools that you have available react a bit differently then and that makes color grading a lot more convenient. So to do so, I go into project settings. There I go to color management and then under color science, I turn on DaVinci YRGB color managed. Then I turn that automatic color management off and I click on HDR DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate. And here in the output color page, you can either leave it like that if you're on a Windows computer with a normal monitor to gamma 2.4. But if you're an Apple devices, you go to Rec 709A and then you press save. That's all you have to do here. The next step then is to add three nodes so that we have four in total. To do so, you can press right and then add node, add serial. Or on the Mac here, I use option S and there I can also quickly add notes. And I used right click note label to give it some adjustments, ADJ for adjustments, CST for color space transform, LUT for applying a LUT and then CST again, because these are the steps that we need to do here. The first thing I want to do is to apply a LUT and you find that here under LUTs and then film looks, which are all included in DaVinci Resolve, doesn't matter if you get studio or free version. And here I choose the Rec 709 D60 LUT, the 238, three Kodak LUT, which gives us a film look. But as you can see now, it actually looks pretty bad. It's way too contrasty. The highlights here are totally blown out. So what you need to do is a color space transform. So you click on your CST node and then you drag color space transform in here. And we use the two color space transforms to convert the color space from the timeline to the color space that the LUT expects. And then we convert it back to the timeline. Under input color space, you choose DaVinci White Gamut. Under input Gamma, you choose DaVinci Intermediate. Under output color space, you choose Rec 709. And under output gamma space, you choose Cineon Film Lock. Now that looks even worse than before. So we go into the other CST and we also drag color space transform in here. And now we select Rec 709. And under input gamma, you select gamma 2.4. Under output color space, you select DaVinci White Gamut and output gamma also DaVinci Intermediate again. Now you can see it looks quite flat, but this is just because we didn't do our adjustments yet. And this is what we do next. So I click on the adjustment node and I go here into the HDR tools on my screen and I drag the exposure down until it already looks pretty good. Somewhere around negative 1.9 because I want to go for a dark moody look here because we're in the forest and we have all this fog going on which looks really nice. So that's already looking pretty good but I want to do some further adjustments so I drag the shadows down here a little bit to make the bushes here a bit darker but I also want to play around with the light and the highlight you can do so by selecting it here in the circles at the top. So let's also drag the light a little bit down and see what that does and also the highlights yeah, it brings out the trees a bit more in the distance. I like that. But I must say it actually looks a bit too dark for me. So I'll bring the shadows up a little bit more, maybe negative five. All you have to do here is really drag the sliders around until it looks good. Just play a bit around with them and then it's totally fine. And I also want to do a quick white balance adjustment. For that, I go here in the temperature slider and I drag that a little bit to the left. It's generally good to do that with GoPro cameras because they are usually a bit yellowish, a bit more on the warmer side. So if you drag that slider a little bit to the left, then that becomes better. Better. Yeah, I think negative 200 is pretty good for this shot. And as you can see, only after doing these adjustments, it already looks a lot more cinematic. Like I would not think that that is GoPro footage anymore. And that's mostly because of that LUT that we applied there. It's the Kodak LUT, it gives it this nice Kodak film look. So you can see we have really beautiful gradations here. When you look at my jacket, for example, that looks quite nice and also in the distance, it looks quite smooth already. And this is because of that LUT and it's so nice that that's baked into DaVinci Resolve. There's one more thing I want to do though. My jacket looks a little bit too orangey. It's usually a bit more red in reality. So I go here into my curves and there in the second curve here in the U versus U curve, I can quickly select the color of my jacket with a pipette tool that you find here at the bottom and clicking on the image. Then you see all the points here. And here I select the midpoint and I just drag it a little bit up 
so that my jacket is actually red and not orange anymore. I also find that my skin tones look a bit, little bit more natural after doing so. GoPros are a bit more on the yellow or green side, so bringing a little bit more red in there definitely helps. Now I'm already pretty happy with this shot after the first step color grading but now comes the second step where I want to add some background blur to make it more look like a big camera but for that you need the studio version. So if you don't have the studio version you can just skip this step and to add our background blur effect I scroll down to the Resolve FX Refine tab and there you find depth map so I drag that into there you need to resolve 18 for that and then I want to connect the last note to this clip with the green point here and then also to the end and here it's also important to connect the alpha channel which is this blue point here so you just connect that to the depth map node and then you can already see that it looks quite weird and your computer might also get pretty slow because this is a taxing effect so I go to quality and faster because even on my M1 Max that already lags a bit and I also click on invert because all the white parts in the image is what later will get the background blur and the black parts will not get any blur as you can see now it would also get way too much blur across the whole image. So I click adjust map levels and I bring the near limit down until I'm completely black and I also have a look at the background that the background doesn't look too wide or only the areas that are really far away look wide. You can also scroll to another frame to really see how it would look later. Something like that I think is good so I will be perfectly in focus. And after that I add another note by pressing option S and I also need to connect the alpha channel here from the depth map to this node. And now I go back to the depth map and I turn the depth map preview off so I can see my actual image again. And then here in the bottom part, I go to this blur tab and here all I have to do is dragging that blur up to make the background blurry. Here it's important to not overdo it. As you can see, when I do too much of it, it looks quite unrealistic. So I only want to add a little bit of blur. It's a wide angle lens overall. And even if you have a fast wide angle lens, it usually doesn't get that blurry. So only adding a little bit of blur makes it look realistic. It looks pretty good overall, but I think it's a bit too much blur. It already looks slightly unrealistic. So let's bring that down a little bit. Yeah, I think now we have it. Now there's a realistic amount of blur in the shot. And now, as you can see, just with these two adjustments, adjustments it already looks pretty much like a big camera like my S7S3 with a wide angle lens so it's so great what you can do with it and even if you buy the studio version it's $300 plus a GoPro let's say you use a GoPro Hero 8 or 9 which should be around $400 it's $700 to generate this look of course you need to have a proper computer but if your computer is too slow you can also use proxy files or optimized media to have a bit faster workflow just search for that here on YouTube there are many tutorials on how to generate proxies for the Winchery Resolve then you can also do it with a slow machine. Someone is playing with fireworks here you probably hear that in the background that's a bit weird I just keep talking I don't want to redo the video now it actually gets quite warm but it's come to the third step now and that is that I want to add a glow effect to make the highlights even softer and this is something that you can also do in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. So to do that I go back into my library and then I look for the glow effect here which is under Resolve FX Lite. Also drag that in there and connect my other clips with it. And as you can see right now, nothing happens because the shine threshold is too high. So I bring that down. And as you can see, now we get this nice glow effect here in the highlights. You can play a bit around with that until it looks good. I would say I like it like that. I don't want to add too much to it. My God, the fireworks go crazy now. <laughs> but yeah, back to topic. And there are also some other controls here like spread, for example. But I think the standard spread is pretty good. So I would just leave it as it is. If you want to get an anamorphic effect, you can also drag the HV ratio to the right. So as you can see right now, we get this anamorphic lens effect but this is not what I want here and I would say that already looks pretty good so if you have a look at before and after from the glow effect I really like that that makes it look a bit more cinematic so I'm actually really impressed what you can do with DaVinci Resolve when it comes to GoPro footage but also many other cameras but of course to be able to get the most cinematic footage you also have to shoot right with your GoPro and to do so also check out this video here that I made for the GoPro Hero 10 but it also counts for the Hero 9 and Hero 8 mode of the stuff there so check that out if you want to learn more about gopros and i hope you enjoyed this video if yes then also please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe for upcoming videos see you